In this video we're going to give a summary of the famous statement that life feeds on negative entropy, which comes from the 1943 Quixotic conjecture made by Schrodinger from his Dublin University lecture, What is Life? A laymanized lecture given to an audience which was turned into the book, What is Life According to Physics and Chemistry? Which, according to WorldCat library rankings, is employed or hold it in 2,421 libraries worldwide. And this book is the first or most cited book in thermodynamics in the world in post 20th century thermodynamics publications. The second being Gilbert Lewis's Thermodynamics and the Free Energy of Chemical Substances. So in this video we're going to compare the two books by following this article which I just finished writing in the last few hours and show the errors in Schrodinger and the updated views according to Lewis. So here we have the basic model. Schrodinger says that living matter is any organism that feeds on negative entropy. In the opening of his lecture, or not necessarily the opening, but in the core chapter of his lecture, he says that to decide when a piece of matter is alive, right, that is, when it goes on doing something, moving, exchanging material with its, with its environment, as compared to, say, a dead, inert lump of matter, that it is a system away from the state of thermodynamical equilibrium, or maximum entropy, as he defines things. This is all incorrect, as we will discuss. Firstly, he says that a permanent state is reached when no observable events occur. Okay, just give me back a minute here. Over here he says, when a system that is not alive is isolated or placed in a uniform in environment, all motion usually comes to a standstill very soon as a result of various kinds of friction, differences in electrical or chemical potential being equalized, substances which tend to form a chemical compound and so on, temperature becomes uniform by heat conduction. After that, the whole system fades into a dead, inert, lump of matter. So, over, so firstly he says the system is not alive. This is the system. So in the boundary here could be six humans or six atoms or six molecules, doesn't matter. But Schrodinger says the system is not alive, but it, that at equilibrium the whole system phased into a dead inert lump of matter. So here we have semantic confusion already that First, he's talking about a system that is not alive. So, it, it, of course, he's giving a lecture to people in an auditorium, Dublin University. He's speaking off the cuff. But he says that a non-alive system fades into a dead system. This doesn't make any sense. We'll just 
give him a pass on this because sometimes you have to take one step forward, which is what's going on here, before you have to take like 10 or 15 steps backwards. That's what's been going on in the last 80 years. A step is backwards. Props to Schrodinger for making this lecture, but we're going to take a 15 steps backwards and look exactly what he's saying here. So, in his quote, he says that in equilibrium, there are no observable events occurring in this permanent state when equilibrium is reached and that no events can be seen. Okay. So Schrodinger is using what's called the physics point of view. That he's a physicist and he only understands a partial understanding of entropy. For example, thinking about gas molecules left to cool down, or something along these lines. Possibly Planck's model of the entropy of a black body. This, however, is greatly different than a physical chemical point of view of entropy which is the chemist's model of entropy according to physics, which is how we explain the origin, formation, and movement of organisms such as humans, that is, you and I. Now, correctly, to update or modify Schrodinger, it was August Horstmann, in 1873 who first defined exactly what is maximum entropy in terms of chemical reactions. Specifically, four years prior, in 1869, Horstman penned an article on, based on experiment of the heated evaporation of ammonium chloride. So we have ammonium chloride heated disassociates into ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas. Now he begins to apply entropy to this model. Let's how this reaction occurs. Then in 1873 he applies entropy to the problem of chemical disassociation. We're in phosphorus pentachloride PCL5 disassociated disassociates when heated into phosphorus trichloride PCL3 and chlorine Cl2. Now here we have an arrow going one way. Now a few years later in 1884. Jacobus Hoff, in his studies in chemical dynamics, upgrades the one-way arrow to the two-way arrow. That is, not only is there reactions going forward, there are also reactions going in the reverse. That is, not only does phosphorus pent pentachloride disassociate into these two, but there are also reassociation reactions in the reverse directions. That is, phosphorus trichloride and chlorine molecule revert going forming back into phosphorus pentachloride. That is there are two things going on here at the same time. That is there are events going this way and there are events going this way at equilibrium which contradicts what Schrodinger says previously that at equilibrium there are no events occurring and that this is the dead level and death according to thermodynamics. Now Horstman who was the first to apply entropy to chemical reactions based on Clausius says in 1873 that the entropy of a chemical reaction is equal to the partial of the heat 
per mole of reactants divided by the absolute temperature of the heat in the reaction plus Z, which is the disgregation defined in Paclausius in 1862 as the amount of attract the uh, aggregation moving to disaggregation or molecules moving away from a state of or an aggregated state to a disaggregated states I'm going from reactants to products and he says according to the second law that the value of entropy reaches a maximum in respect to the chemical reaction which could be the formation of U or I in our birth is met according to the following condition that is when the differential of entropy divided by the differential of the molar amount of species equals zero where dx is the degree of reaction or dissociation that means that dx is the the amount of moles in this direction or change in molar amount of reactants going to products is equal to the change in the molar amount of products going to reactants is equal to zero. That means that the rate of reactants going to products is the same top arrow as the bottom arrow of the products going to reactants which equals zero. This is what's called a maximum entropy. It does ha has nothing to do with disorder, death, dead state, heat death, and all of those other metaphors that we frequently encounter or, s or are barraged with or have been inundated with in the last century. It's what's called misinformation propagated forward by a century. So in 1923 Gilbert Lewis has thermodynamics and the free energy of chemical substances which is second ranked thermodynamics book according to WorldCat 1752 libraries hold this book which is compared to Two thousand four hundred twenty-one libraries in the world hold Schrodinger's What Is Life book. Now, the reason more people, more libraries hold this Schrodinger's book is because it's laymanized, easier to understand, simpler you make things, the faster its appeal. But Lewis's book is more profound, and he says or he gives tables of free energies of formation of chemical substances from calculations that is the amount of energy that goes into forming a chemical substance such as PCl5, PCl3, or Cl2. Each one of these molecular species have a, has a certain free energy of formation or formation energy that differs based on the amount of energy of the universe puts into forming each of these chemical species. And you can calculate the free energy change for the reaction by subtracting the free energy in the final state versus the sum of the free energies in the final state subtracted from free energies of the sum of the reactants in the initial state. And he makes tables of these things. He pioneers the, what's called the method of tabulating free energies of formation of chemical substances. He spent two decades on working on this in, in uh, MIT and Harvard and Berkeley. 
it will be many centuries before we catch up to this one so this one section right here so we're just going to quickly summarize or move forward in this video in 1975, Norman Doloff, in his heat death in the Phoenix, Spanian and Lewis says that what gives us an organism synthesis equation. That is, just as Lewis said that, or Lewis outlined for us, we can calculate the free energy of Gibbs energy or Gibbs energy of any chemical substance such as hydrogen oxygen, PCL5, or bacteria, or human, according to the free energies required to form the substances from the chemical elements in their standard state. So in 1975, Dolov gives this so-called organism synthesis equation. He says, the number of elements, summation, that go into the formation of the organism is, form, is a function of the free energy of a reaction at standard state, which he says is positive, and the free energy of formation of the entropy change for the reaction in standard state, which he says is negative. Now, the symbolism in his formulation might be incorrect, but the general formula, what he's saying here is correct. Generally, for a number of elements or chemical species to go into the formation of an organism, such as a chicken, a mouse, or a human, the free energy change for the reaction has to be negative. Now this is said right, this is 19, 1975, and Pauling at the bottom here, which we'll get to, he says, We know from the principles of thermodynamics that the free energy of the organism necessarily decreases. That means negative. That means it goes from positive at higher level to a negative at the lower level. That means there's a negative change in the free energy. One cannot say without more information whether there is an increase or decrease in the entropy of the organism. And this is ripping on Schrodinger's original lecture. We'll get back to this shortly. But Possibly I'm wrong on these symbols, but I intuitively think that Dolov is off on these plus and minus symbols. But the important, the important point to note here is that he says that the change in the free energy of the reaction of the formation of the organism, be it you, I, a mouse, a chicken, a fish, or a bacteria, is measured by the free energy change, not by the increase in entropy which was disproved in, by Helmholtz in 1882. So, to elaborate or to continue, Harada, Christopher Harada, in his 2000 thermochemical approach to relationships, complex equilibria of men and women, which he formulated when he was about age 18 or 21, when he was a student at Caltech. He says that to go through a real example, that when he started at Caltech as a freshman, there were 900 single students or chemical species. And his class at that time was comprised of about a ratio of 55% to 45% males to females. In other words, there were 500 and 495 male students. 405 female students they were put into the system of Caltech as freshmen and that was their class and they would spend four years together as a class graduating class of say 2004 and Harada says that shortly thereafter into the introduction of these 900 chemical species that 200 of them formed couples, shown here. And there were other, his reaction is shown here, where X is 
female, Y is the male. They form couples, XY. Uh, they form X squared molecules, which are lesbian couples. Y squared, which are, as Rada says, gay couples. We have the XY squared, which is a female with two males in a relationship, which is rare. And then it goes on to say that we have other models such as a male bond with two females and a male bond with four females, which he says is a rare Middle Eastern polygamous molecule. But the core of the model is of the reactions that male and female react, and if you add 900 or say 450 males and females, you're going to get 200 that are going to bond together. Rada goes on to calculate the equilibrium constant and based on the standard formula from chemistry, and he calculates a value of 4.5, and then he correlates this K equilibrium to the entropy of the reaction. Now, this is where Schrodinger is shown to be falsely incorrect. Schrodinger says that at equilibrium it's death. There is no activity, which as Rada says, there is lots of activity. And that, for example, if we had 900 people together, in a college atmosphere, there are going to be a few children. So, for example, if you had five, 450 males, 450 females, from couples, about 200 of them are going to bond, and there's going to be one or two children that, that are going to come out of that situation through sex. And this would be the new equilibrium constant. Now, if you go back to Schrodinger in his lecture, he says that equilibrium, he says there is no observable events occur at equilibrium. Well, we certainly see an observable event occurring here. For example, the birth of you or, not, you or I. And this occurs somewhere at about the at past, at or past the equilibrium constant state. Now to continue, Schrodinger says that in the past we were silenced by saying that we feed on energy. Okay, that's like what parents teach their children, is that the point of everything is that you feed on animals, who feed on grass, who feed on sunlight. And he says this is absurdity or stupid, stupidity that has been passed down to us. Now, he says, in the modern world, what keeps us from death is that, according to the second law, every process, in Schrodinger's view, in nature occurs According to the increase of the entropy of the part of the world where it is going on. This is correct. In every part of the world, or every system where you're measuring things, turning according to heat expanding systems and heat contracting systems, the entropy is going to increase. The problem here is that Schrodinger has a misunderstanding of what entropy is. According to the original formulation, defined by Clausius in 1865. Schrodinger goes on to say that what an organism feeds on is negative entropy. Or paradoxically, the essential thing in metabolism is that the organism succeeds in freeing itself from all the entropy it cannot help producing Life. This whole thing is just a complete mess. Firstly, alive does not exist because atoms and molecules are not alive, neither are humans.
but he continues by stating that he says it's a marvelous faculty of the living organism according to which you are your eyes supposedly avoid decay and do thermodynamical equilibrium which means death according to Schrodinger which as we've just shown above does not mean death specifically we have a thermodynamic equilibrium where a child is produced so obviously the birth of a child does not mean death. So Schrodinger is in error. But this so-called thermodynamic folklore has propagated in the last 80 years. And to compound the matter, in 1950, Leon Briolin, or Brill, OUN in his thermodynamics information theory abbreviated negative entropy with the term negative entropy and that resulted in books being published such as the 1978 energy and entropy by a Russian physicist George Alexiev sitting such joking comments as give me a plate of neg entropy in ridicule the Bert Riol and Schrodinger ideology or Pauline who says life does not feed on neg entropy as a cat laps up milk but as Schrodinger came to find after his lecture some of his physics colleagues began to ridicule him about his negative entropy model. And they said it's incorrect. After which, Schrodinger had to pen his famous note to chapter 6, where he said that had he been speaking to an audience of physicists instead of laymen people in a college lecture hall, he would have turned the discussion to free energy. So when you do, in fact, turn the discussion to free energy, you get the aggressively suggested opinions of Pauline, who in 1987 said that Schrodinger, in his opinion, in his discussion of negative entropy, made a negative contribution to biology. And he goes on to state that uh, we know from thermodynamics that it is the free energy of the organism that necessarily decreases. That's the key right there. Free energy decreases. Now I want to babble on about whether the entropy increases or decreases in the organism or in the system. That's, that's what's called mm, confused applications of thermodynamics to society or the formation of it or movements of humans. Well, that's about it in this whole situation. If you want further information, you want to go to the HFET, which means Human Free Energy of Formation Theorists. There's 40 of us, including myself, and it explains that humans are not formed through an increase or fighting disorder or whatever of the world, but rather through a it's called the, the free energy of the synthesis equations, according to which G is the free energy or the formation energy of a child. Enthalpy is, or H is the enthalpy, T is the absolute temperature of the system, S is the entropy, and TS is what's called the bound the bound energy as defined by Helmholtz in 1882. And we'll skim through this article. And you can you know, follow through uh, 40 
some people are working on this problem.